today, God. And your mouthpiece today, oh God. Your mouthpiece today, oh God. Oh God, self shall die. Oh God, and you rise up there, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, the oracles, oh God. Everything that you planted down inside, oh God. Let it bubble up, God. And let it overflow, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let us send healing, oh God. Let your word deliver today. Let your word be manifested today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call every mind together. I call every spirit together. I call everything that's like Christ to the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh God, in the message today, oh God, give us a clean heart, oh God, yes. hey, renew us, oh God, renew us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, renew our minds, God, renew our thoughts, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let us not just look, God. Oh, God, but put a blind ear, God, to the natural eye, oh, God. Put a blind eye to the natural, God. And let us see you in spirit today, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for what you're going to do for us today. We thank you, God. For the man and the woman, God, that will hear your cry today. And they will come to you, oh God. Hey, Jesus. Hey. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for sending your people in the house today. Hey. Even though they've been tried to be hindered, oh God. Hey, they're not lost. <laughs> they found you this morning, God. So yes, God, they found their way. They found their way to the house. To the house of worship. Oh, God. Send what they need. In the name of Jesus. Fight for them today. Fight for them today. In the name of Jesus. Cause yourself to be mighty and strong in this place, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We love you today, God. We're going to worship you with all our spirit, God, with all our soul, God. We're going to humbly subject ourselves to you, and we're going to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, God. For it is due unto you, oh Jesus. Yeah, we thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen.
receive. God said, press in today. Yes. Press in as the woman of God prepares to come forth. My Hallelujah. God. She's my big sister. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. And the way God reconnected us. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am so thankful for yes. her. Yes. Because the hallelujah. She will tell me the truth even when I don't want to hear it. But I thanks be to God. Hallelujah. For truth. Thanks be to God to be connected with women that want to see you make it. Thanks be to God that women, hallelujah, that want to push you into your destiny. So I thank God for her on today. A real woman of God. A prophet, hallelujah, to this nation. Hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And today, hallelujah, God will use her, hallelujah, to bring forth his word. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. So don't look at the vessel. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't look at the vessel. My God. Thank you, Lord. God wants you to press in to yes. hear yes. what the Spirit yes. is saying to the church yes. in the season. Yes. unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go thou in thine house and sojourney wheresoever thou can sojourney. For the Lord has called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the Lord, and the, uh, excuse me, and the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household and sojourned into the land of the Philistines for seven years. And it came to pass at the seventh year, at, excuse me, and it came to pass at the seventh year's end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. The king talked with Gazea, I mean, yeah, Gazea, the servant of the man of God, saying, tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah has done. And it came to pass, as he was talking with the king, how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house, for her land, and Gehazi said, My Lord, O king, this is the woman. This is her son who Elijah restored to life. Yes. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed her a special and a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruit of the land since the day that she left the land, even until now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your word. We bless it, and we thank you for the word that has come, Father God, for your people. 
Father, as I die, I ask that you rise up. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. I pray for the hearts of the people that you break every stony heart. Yes, Jesus. That their heart be made of flesh to receive the word. And the word will fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit in this season, O oh God. We thank you even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. And those of you in the house can be seated at this time. If I could use just briefly for a topic, it would simply be timing is everything. Timing is everything. And we're in a, a place in a season where people can't wait for nothing. <laughs> Everybody wants everything right away. Right. We're looking for stuff, and, and we want God to move in the midst of things right then, right, right there. Yeah. As soon as we get into something, he wants it right, we want it right then and there. Uh -huh. But we don't want to wait and take our time or wait on God to do whatever he's doing for us or through us. We don't want to go through the process of time. We just want things right away. But I'm here to tell somebody, timing yeah. is everything. But what we don't realize in timing, what, what, we, what we have the problem is with timing, is that when God is doing things, we get kind of impatient in that. We get impatient because we can't see what he's doing. Oh <laughs> That's the problem with waiting on God's time. Yeah. We can't see what God is doing. Therefore, we get impatient. But what we forget that a part of waiting on God is connected to faith. Uh -huh. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for oh, and the evidence of things not seen. And even though God may have promised us stuff and told us what he's going to do in our lives, but because we can't see him at work, we Good. begin to get a little agitated. We get begin to get a little frustrated and we yeah. begin to yeah. move where we shouldn't move because we don't have the patience oh, to wait for the timing. Oh, and when I, when I went to define timing. I first went to the word and it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith uh -huh. worketh patience. Yes. I mean to find patience. This is patience. The capability to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry and upset. Uh -huh. Now how many of us wait without our emotions taking control of us? How many of us can wait in a sense of patience and trusting God and knowing that whatever God says is going to happen. Or do we have this kind of um, attitude? God gave me several analogies for this sermon. And one of them was Madea. Y'all remember. Y'all know Madea. Tyler Perry came up with this character. Uh -huh. And Madea was that individual. When stuff didn't happen, she decided <laughs> she going to make it work uh -huh. either which way in her timing. Uh -huh. And I remember one of her plays and something happened to her grandchild and she was ready to go get revenge and uh, she has a daughter named Cora who's a Christian and she said, Ma, my dear, no, 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 no. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to trust in the Lord. God's going to work it out. And my dear would always respond, he's taking too long. God is taking too long. And some of us have that mindset and that attitude that when God has told us he's going to do something and God is going to recover or God is going to help and shift our situation, we start getting entangled in it because God is taking too long. Too long. My God, my God. But timing, timing, timing is everything. Yeah, yeah. So she would find herself doing stuff and getting herself in trouble and, and getting herself in, in a situation just like we would. Mm -hmm. yep. We do the same exact things. The same exact things. Mm -hmm. When God is telling us to be patient and to be still, mm -hmm. I'm working it out even though you don't see it. Right. But it's a lack of faith that we have. It's a lack of belief that we don't, that, that we have. We don't have the belief system that we should in the church. Oh 
So we start making things work for ourselves, and then when stuff happens, then we find ourselves entangled in mess trying to figure out how we're going to get out of this. But when we look at another analogy God gave me, I don't know if you all watched Dream Girls. It was one of it was a really good movie to me. I really enjoyed it. Dream Girls was about a, a, a singing group back in the '60s, uh -huh. and there was an individual, one of the lead singers named Effie. Yeah. Effie, Effie was yeah. played by Jennifer Hudson. That girl knows she can sing. Yeah. She blew out Beyonce every day of the week, and she felt. Because she was a lead all of their, you know, little career, right. she was supposed to at this time lead. Right. And they end up getting them a manager. They got a manager who st started seeing a vision in time. Uh -huh. He started realizing that the time that we're in, although Effie, you got a voice, but it's not your time. Wow, that's good. That's good. <laughs> you got the power to sing. But it's not your time. He recognized the timing that we were in. We were in the timing where that when you wanted to bring a black, a black, an African American group into a white setting, uh -huh. it was hard for them to do that because it was hard for them to receive us. They even had, even though they were the entertainers, they still had to go through the back door of the service. They didn't get the same respect, no matter how great their talent was. No matter how great they were, they still was treated beneath themselves. Wow. But he recognized that Beyonce, who plays the, uh, Dina, uh -huh. he recognized, who you fair-skinned. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You almost look like them. Uh -huh. And you still got a good voice. Right, right. I'm going to push you up the front. Because in this time... Your gift will be received That's from these people. Yeah, come on, I need That's you to go with me in the spirit. Because this is what happens in the church. Right. We look at other people's elevation and we look at the movement in the house. And, oh, they moving her and they moving them and they moving this and they moving that. But baby, because it's not your time. It's not that your gift is not needed in the house. But just like they told Effie, wait your turn. Yes. And some of us are moving so quickly and we're getting a little discouraged. And, and we're getting discouraged because we're looking at other people and how they are moving wow. in time. So Curtis had an idea. Curtis put Beyonce up front because of the timing. But if you watch the movie, time shifted. Yeah, yeah. Time shifted. Yeah. And in that time that Effie was waking, you see Effie acting just like we got. Effie got all caught up. Effie got messed up. She went to drinking. She did all kinds of things. Ended up poor and ended up on welfare. Ended up not being able. She is gifted. gifted. Uh -huh. Because she couldn't wait on her time. Yes. Yes. Good. Because she couldn't wait on her time. She got herself in a whole bunch of mess. Uh -huh. Not waiting on time. Yeah. But then it came into the story that she was reconciled with her brother. And her brother comes to her and says, Effie, I got a song. Yeah. She said, I got a song that you can sing. She said, Effie, it's your time. Because see, time has shifted. No longer we were in the 60s, now we moved to the 70s and it's black power and black folks standing up and, and we not ashamed of ourselves, our body. We, we, we up and proud and we not ashamed of our color. We not bowing down. He said it's time now. The time is now, Effie. Now you can sing. Now we got a song for you. And some of us just need to wait our turn because it's, it's about the timing of God. Time is everything. Time. Told them, they told her, Effie, Effie, just, just wait. Just wait your turn, Effie. It's not that you ain't got the gift. It's not that you can't do, do this thing, but we just need to wait for time. <laughs> what is time? Time is defined as the choice and judgment or control of when something should happen. Should happen. So as I begin to pray, I say, God, how, how do we find, define your time? This is how he, he gave me 
This is what he gave me. God in his wisdom chooses and controls when something should happen. God in his wisdom, he chooses, not only did he choose it, he said I control it when it should happen. God in his wisdom, his wisdom chooses and controls when something should happen. Don't you know he know you better than you know yourself? I can't give her that call right now. Because I know she's about to quit her job four months from now. Although I'm God, I get paid a bill. But see, the thing is when we don't realize and we try to wonder why God don't give us stuff and why we don't have things. The Bible says when you're faithful of a few things, I'll make you ruler over much. Some of y'all don't have nothing because you ain't even faithful for what he already done gave you. So because he knows it, this is why he said, I control things through my wisdom. I know you, you my child, and as parents, we know our children. You know who you can give something to. You know who you can tell something to. You know who you can leave responsible with something. This is what God said, through my wisdom, this is why I control things for you. I try to keep things in order for you because I know how you're going to respond and I know how you're going to do things because I'm your father. I ain't released that yet. I can't release it. I can't give you the things that you want and you desire because I'm watching how you behave. Y'all know your kids. You're not going to go buy that $100 toy because they didn't even take care of the $6 toy. Okay. That's and that's how God is with us. If you're not faithful in the little things that I give you to be over, how can I promote you to give you much? Yes, yes. So wait your turn, Effie. You have to sit still and just wait on God. So when he sees that you're ready and you're prepared for the things that he has for you, yeah, yeah. it's in his timing. God's timing is yeah. everything. Yeah. And some of us are walking out of his timing. We just like little children. How many of you back in the day, you know, let's go way back because kids are different. They catching Ubers and stuff and driving on their own and everything, but Back in my time, back then in the 70s, and some of y'all can relate, they were, you were blessed if you had one car <laughs> at your house. They considered you about rich. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a vehicle. How many of you remember when, when your mom and them would go out? And she said, I'm going to take you with me. And they dress you up in that grandma, um, that came out little outfit, you know. And you'd be all cute and you ain't supposed to get dirty and all that other good stuff. And then she said, we're going to go out. Uh -huh. And when we out, when, when I'm finished what I'm doing, I may take you somewhere. I'll get you a little hamburger yeah. or something. Yeah. She had done giving you a promise for you to have some type of expectation. Yeah. But there was something placed in front of them. <laughs> some conditions. He said, if you go in here and be still, don't you move while I take care of everything. Be still and be quiet. Have you ever went out like that? Y'all remember, we had to go there. We had yeah. to do things. And when they told us to be still, we had to be still. Yeah. Because I don't want these people, I don't know who the people was, but these people, <laughs> they think you don't know how to act when you're out here. Right. So you need to behave. So mama go to the bank because she got to go take care of business and get the money to go do the other things. And here you are sitting in your little chair. Here, I'm going to put you right here. You be still until yeah. I'm finished. And just like God, he said, I need you to be still until I'm finished. I need you just to be still. I'm taking care of business. Be still until I'm finished. But some of us like that child, you know, we start seeing things. We start getting a little fidgety because, you know, we feel we can't, you know, be still. That ADHD start kicking in. We start rocking. We went from being still like this and looking cute. Just like that. Right. And, and next thing you know, you start rocking. Yeah. And you know when children start rocking, they ready to move. Yeah. And they start, and here's the rocking. 
Mama standing in the line, uh -huh. still looking back to make sure you in place. Right. And here you are, looking around to see what you can get yourself into because it's hard for you just to sit still and wait. She right there in the line, close to the window. And there it is. You see it. Mama, you want to get up and you see something you want to play, play with and you stop playing with it. But there that mom, she don't have to say nothing. The black mother never had to say anything. You just, she just turned around and saw you. And you was already knowing. And that's just how God is. He don't have to say anything. He'll send a song. He'll send a message. He'll send a messenger. And he'll get you right back in place because you done moved. He said, okay, God, I'm sorry. Let me get back in place. Right, right. Let me be still. Let me be still. Let me not try to, try to do anything right now. But because of the anxiousness, and the word said, be anxious for nothing and everything, prayer and supplication. Yeah. But we're not praying. We're not doing what we need to do to cause our, to cause our spiritual um, emotions and all these emotions and all these anxieties to come down. Yeah. But instead, it's taking control of us. And here we are. we like that kid again. We're rocking even harder. Yeah. But then here it is. We done seen the water fountain. I'm just going to go get some water. That's all I'm going to do is go get some water. My mama ain't going to say nothing, but mama told you what? Be still. Sit here and be still. And that's just how God says, sit here and be still. I'm taking care of business. Yeah. You don't understand it. We didn't yeah. understand what mama was doing at that teller. All we know that she was standing in the line, right. but she was taking care of business. And what we do, we go over here uh -huh. and we go to the water fountain. Because back then they had them little water fountains that you do like this and the thing go all the way over. Yeah. And that became a game to some of us as kids. And we hitting the little thing, and next thing you know it, you all in the water, and you playing, you don't got your whole outfit dirty. Oh, my God. Don't get an outfit dirty when you're out with your mama. Jesus, no. That's a sin in itself. You done made a puddle, you done made a mess, and you done got out of your seat. And the thing is, you was right at the point of where God was about to bless you. You, here is mama getting to the window, turning around and seeing an empty seat. That's how God is. As he's working and crafting your miracle and he's working and crafting your promise, he looks up to see that you're not where he left you. So mama just, you know, you over there by the wall, and you see your mama, your mama see you, and y'all just catch eyes. Yeah, Jesus. That's it. She don't have to say too much, One but she thing. mouths it. That's what she say. You already know. You 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 lip reading. You you may not have never ever read lips in your life, but you knew what those words said. I'm going to beat you. She didn't, it didn't come out of her mouth because she didn't want these people to know what she was going to do to you. But you understood. Now watch this. You left a seat of blessing right here. Because of your disobedience, now you're in a seat of correction. Because you couldn't be still and wait. Because you couldn't control your emotions and your feelings and all of that stuff that was rising up in you. That, and then you had the, the nerve to get up. And, and now, watch this. All of that mess. All of that that you done got wet up. That whole outfit. Everybody know you're in trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They when you move out of place of blessing, everybody can see it all over yeah, you. Yeah. You think you're the only one to know because you're, because you're the one that did it in the dark. But no, it becomes evident to everybody around you. Something going on with her. She come to church, her head all out of place. She come in her face looking crazy. She come and she can't even lift her hand because she in the seat of correction, not in the seat of blessing. Because she decided to get up because she couldn't be still. Be still. <laughs> Didn't I tell you to be still? Wow. So now mama comes. She don't say nothing. She said, just come on, get on and get in this car. And if you in Florida, you get in that car, you already know what's about to happen. And correction's going to come. 
But then you know she already told you she had other places to go, but because of the way you look, I need you to hear this in the spirit. Because of the way you look, I can't take you into this store with me. You sit in this hot car and you wait until I get back. You be in there sweating. They just crack it about this much because they don't want the people to steal you. So they crack it enough that you can get air and so that the DCF and the folks won't kill you or come and get her and, and put her away. So they give you enough air. But you, while you in there, you in there crying. Uh, right. 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 And this is what we do. And this is what we do. When we in the hot box, we, we start crying. We start crying out. We start repenting. We say, God, we sorry. Oh, God, help me, Lord. And they would go in that store for hours. They didn't care if you were still out there. They trusted God enough you was going to be there when they got there because they left enough air for you to breathe. And that's how God is. I'm going to leave you enough air so you can breathe. I'm going to allow you to feel the, the weight of this because you decided to move. You decided to figure it out for yourself. You decided to put your hands in it. I was just at the teller window. All you had to do is wait. I was just about to turn around and hand you your blessing, but you was missing. My God, my Jesus. God, my God, Jesus. Missing from the seat of blessing. Yes. Come on. But because you disobedient, what what parent rewards a disobedient child? Good. And if he our father, why would he reward you? Yes. Let me let you sit down for a minute and you learn this lesson. And, and, and I want you to, to, to think about what you done did. What the children say, what you learned. Well, huh? you, some of us don't realize what moving does. It interrupts timing. <laughs> it interrupts timing. Because the clock keeps ticking around. He doesn't pause it because you move. It keeps going. And now you got to wait until the time it comes back again to open the door for you. And whatever you're going through, you got to go through it until that time it comes again. And God say, okay then. Until mama get out that store. You in there sweating and crying. She opened the door. <laughs> You slobber. <laughs> and some of y'all would cry so hard if you was like me, you just fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. I'm sweating. I know she ain't coming back. <laughs> Let me just go to sleep. You just fall asleep in the back. Just fall asleep. Y'all the mother over there laughing because she done caught a couple of hers and fell asleep. They fell asleep right back there because they got left in their car. Shoot. You here in Florida heat? You here in Florida heat? That's 107 degrees in that car. The pistols. You in there crying? And then they look at you. Yeah. <laughs> you messed up more than you was when you left that bank because you got sweated and now the sweat dirty. You done got dirty, sweat done turned into dirt. You see what, what moving does? Turn into dirt. Don't turn into sin. And it takes repentance to get you out of that. So when mama come, she see you. She look at you and see you. Now look at you. Just look at you. They're looking a mess. All I wanted to do was take you out here and get you some ice cream and look at you. Where am I going to take you looking like that? That's how God says. Where am I going to take you? This is catching in the spirit. Looking like that. <laughs> Where am I going to take you? How can I elevate you? Looking like that. You all dirty. You out of position. You out of place. You out of my timing. Where am I going to take you looking like that? 
And some of our black mamas, if it, if it was in, a, in the, um, the way to go home, they'll drop you off and keep on doing what they had to do. Or you'll spend another hour in the hot box when she go to the next place. Because they were going to finish their assignment. I'm not going to I'm not going to allow you to stop the movement. I need you to catch it. I'm not going to allow you to stop this movement that I'm doing in the earth and in the church. And I because you got out of place. I'm just going to keep moving, even if I got to get somebody else to do it. Come on, come on. Timing is everything. You can't get out of that seat when you're working in God's timing. When he done promised you something, he done spoken. Once he said it, that settles it. Now it's your faith that you hold on to that is going to come to pass. It's not about your time. Take off your watch. It's not about your time because our time is not even nearly calibrated to the time in heaven. He said, my thoughts ain't even your thoughts. My ways ain't even your ways. So why would you think our timing is the same timing of God? It's not. Because he knows you as his child. He knows what you can deal with and what you can't deal with. He even knew you was going to move from that seat. Yes, he did. He sure did. He already knew. He already knew. Waiting on God takes obedience. And that's the problem. We walk in the spirit of disobedience. That child walked in a place of disobedience. And that's what we do. We need to be obedient when God says something. And once he promises stuff. If we look at our story, let's look at our story. I'm going to shift now to the story. Because I, I know y'all didn't think I was going to give you no Bible. But I am. Those are just some illustrations. Because God wants things to be practical. So when we minister, and people can grab hold to what is being said quickly. But here the Shudamite woman, if you remember the Shudamite woman, she's the same woman in chapter 4. She's the one that Elijah had raised her son. She's the one that Elijah had prophesied first and said, you're going to have a son. And, and he did, she did have the son, and the son died in the midst of it. But yet she went to Elijah, and we know the story of those of you who don't. Um, the prophet came and and caused the son to come back to life. This is the same Shudamite woman. Yeah. And in this time and in this season, there's a famine in the land because God has pronounced a judgment on this land. Mm -hmm. And here you see Elijah. Elijah goes to the Shudamite woman's house. Mm -hmm. He knocks on his friend's door because they done built a relationship because every time Elijah was in town, that was the house that he would rest at. That was the house that he would stay at. So there was a relationship right there. Yeah. So he goes and he tells the woman, hey, listen, let me let you know this. This is about to happen. Wow. There's a famine coming and I need you to leave because it's going to be here for about seven years. I don't care where you're going. Go and find some place. So journey means something to leave and go for temporary. It's not going to be a long time, but just go. But you got to do it for about seven years. Yes, that's good. Listen to the instructions. Get your family and your household. There's a famine coming. Wow. You have to leave for seven years years. Now this is the same woman in chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Now when he told her that she was going to have a child, she went back and forth with him. Look, I didn't ask you for all of that. I just gave you a room in the bed. That's all I gave you. Ain't nobody ask you for all these promises. Don't play with me. Stop lying. Right, right. But in this time, uh -huh. there's a shift in there. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't question him. She didn't go back and forth with him because of their relationship and how it changed it. Their relationship, there was some sense of intimacy here that she knew when the man of God spoke, she was to listen. And that's just how we're supposed to be when God speaks. Once God says something to us, we should be back talking, figuring it out, trying to write it down and say, no, that don't work for me right there. No, she did exactly what he told her without question, without hesitation. But some of us have this delay. We question him and try to think about doing it, and then we start doing it. We have this delay obedience. Wow. Wow. I'm going to do it, but I got to think about what you're talking about. What you mean a fan? Where am I going to take all these people? Oh, my gosh. I just, I just planted that stuff out there this year. Why are we leaving now? She didn't go through all of that. God spoke. 
She listened. Catch it. God spoke. She listened and she obeyed. God spoke. She listened and then she obeyed. With no questions asked. No hesitation. She listened. And now here you have it. She gets up and she goes and she takes her family. For seven years she's gone. In the midst of this, watch this. You don't see it nowhere in this Bible that she told her neighbors, hey, can you look at my house while I'm gone? Right, right. She left with that level of faith. And sometimes we, you know, I went out of town. I remember going out of town and um, I was leaving. And, and when I go out of town, I tell my neighbors, hey, I'm going to be out of town. I don't know, you know, nobody should be coming to my house. Look at my stuff. That's how we do today because we want to protect our things. Mm -hmm. She didn't care about that. All she cared about was being obedient yes, to the voice of God. Yes, that stuff didn't matter. Yes, if God said it, that settles it, I believe it. Let me go. Yes, yes. It's a famine coming. And I trust you, God, enough to move when you say move. But some of us are delayed in our movement. And that can get you out of the timing of God. You contemplating, you thinking about it, you trying to figure it out for yourself and try to see if you can adjust the plans or if God can work with you here and there. And God said, no, seven years leave and go and take everybody. Don't leave nobody behind. Take them as well. That's how God is. He loves us enough when trouble comes. Notice that Elijah didn't go knock on everybody else's door. He only knocked on one door. <laughs> And that was her door. Yes. And that's how God is with his people when he, he loves you enough when trouble and things are coming your way. He's trying to bring warning. He's trying to bring instruction. Hey, you need to do this and you need to do that. But some of us won't even prepare when the warning is coming. He loved her just that much. Let me get my friend out of here. This lady is taking care of me. I can't leave her. So he tells her and she shifts and goes. And you would think, after obeying God, things just come back the same way that you expected. No. <laughs> you would think that things would be in the right way that, because you obeyed God. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that's what she thought. Mm. Seven years he told me to leave and come back and, you know, hey, it's supposed to be cool. I can walk into my house, put my feet up, put all this stuff up, and just lay down in my bed. Oh, come on. But sometimes when God is doing things, yeah. he's an extra, watch this, an extraordinary God. Yeah. <laughs> he does extra. Yeah. How do we tell the kids, hey, you be an extra, God be extra. And when he's doing something extraordinary for you, when he's doing things behind the scene and we don't understand it and we don't know, we kind of get a little frantic like she did when she came back and she was upset. Wait a minute. Not Elijah, this is the second time you done did this now. You told me the boy, you became this boy. <laughs> and it died. Here I am. Seven years later, I come back and my stuff is gone. Her home was occupied. Because of, you studied this, because when you leave land for a long period of time, they think that you have abandoned it. Right, right, yes. <laughs> so they claim it. Somebody else claims this land. So her land was claimed because it was vacant. vacant. Yeah. <laughs> so she said, no, this ain't what God said. No, 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 no. See, we got to know how to hold God to his word. Yes, that's it. She said, no, this ain't going down like this. This is not happening like this because this is not what you said. You told me to leave and then I can come back. So at the end, now check out timing. This is timing. Seven years, she said, at the end of the seventh year, she returned. Mm -hmm. And in that time she returned, little Gehazi, the, the um, assistant to Elijah, is at the king's, and he's talking to the king, and they're exchanging in conversation. Now, you got to remember from Esther, no one could ever come into the presence of the king right. except they've been invited. Right, right, right. I need you to come with me here, and we get here. You can't come into the presence of the king except you're invited. So he's invited here. He's talking to, to the king and he's telling her. And yet she's on her way to the king. 
and she has no invitation to enter into the courts, but yet she's coming to the king to get her stuff. But God, yes, look, this is where time helps. Here's the his Gehazi is sitting and telling the story, and so he said, "Hey, tell me about Elijah." What did Elijah do? What, what did he be doing? Because this is a new king. Right. So she, he began to tell her, him everything. And he comes up to the story of this woman and her son and how this son dies. And, and here it is in the midst of the story. Who walks in the door? She walks in in God's timing. Why somebody God had done put on her behalf to begin to advocate and talk. Why the why she coming in? God is speaking. God is using timing, 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 timing. It was a woman who had a son, and the son died. Matter of fact, that's her right there. She was given permission to enter in. Yeah. Yeah. Has she came too soon? Has she came too late? She may have been left at the gates of the king with no entryway. But see, time will open doors. know what was going on, but God knew in his time, yeah. I'm going to say, oh, seven years, understand this, I looked at it, I said, I kept focusing on end of seven years, end, it couldn't be the beginning, see, the beginning if we use our calendar, oh, it's January, right. All that's right. the beginning, it's not even a full year, it takes 12 months, 12 months. to be a year, wow. how many years did he say, seven, seven. So she had to wait till the fullness of time. <laughs> time is everything. Had to wait for the fullness of time. She couldn't come in January. She couldn't come in March. Because we wouldn't have been in seven years. We would have been six years, two months. He said in seven years return. Because Elijah had already known. God, he's a prophet. God already shown the setup to Elijah. And even though she didn't know, God had somebody in place at that seventh year. Sitting here. Talking to him. Talking about her. Do you understand? About timing. If you just walk in his timing, if you just wait on his instructions, if you obey what he tells you to do, right there, favor will be waiting for you. She walks into God's perfect timing. Just in time. As the servant is talking about her, telling her story. Just telling all her business. But she all right with that. Because that favor opened the door for her to be in the presence yes. of a king. Yes. That's what God would do. If you walk in timing, he will put you before kings. He'll put you before queens. He'll put you in high places. If you just obey and you just follow him and you and you go according to his will. But some of us are getting out of timing. And that's why things are not happening the way that you want it to. You, fr you frustrated and you aggravated. Why all of this happened? Check your watch. Check the timing. Are you in God's timing for what he told you to do? Or did you move or were you uh, disobedient? Did you put your hands in it? Did you try to fix it? Are you all dirty? Are you still in that hot box? Because you didn't follow his timing. She walked right into God's timing. She followed every instruction of the prophet. And sometimes God will speak to the prophets and it's other y'all can do whatever you want to do. We don't listen to the instructions. Then we come back and we whooped. Because we don't obey God 
He is speaking in this hour. Obey him. And as the story ends, watch this. The king beckons her. Come on. Come here. Tell me about yourself, girl. I heard. I heard everything, but I want to hear it from you. And she tells her story. And in that moment, she ended up telling me, hey, while I'm here, <laughs> they don't have my stuff. Right, stuff. right. See? I need my stuff back. Yes. God is extra yes. ordinary. Yes. He's extra. Yes. The king says, they got your stuff. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you special counsel. I'm going to send somebody over there because they're going to have to get out and you ain't going to even have to deal with it. Yes. I'm going to give you somebody special to go yes. before you. You ain't going to have to worry about getting them off your property. Yes. I'm going to evict them myself. You yes. ain't even got to have to worry about all of that. But not only am I going to bless you for what you should have had. I, I, he said, I'm not what you have now, but I'm going to bless you what you should have had. When you left here, you was growing. When you left here, you was blessed. When you left here, your fields were full. I'm going to give you all the fruit of that labor that you left. Not only that, I'm going to give you your right now, and I'm going to give you your future. Yeah. God is extra. 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 He's an extra God. Yeah. He said, I do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever do. I'm exceeding what you're asking for in this season. I'm exceeding it. I'm going beyond what you're asking for. That's just what he did for her because of her obedience. She walked in total obedience to the word of God. She didn't hesitate. She didn't question. She did everything she was told to do. Timing. And I'm going to close. Timing. 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 The timing of God is everything. And God is operating on time. His time. His perfect time. Things are going to happen if you just be patient. He'll give you favor. Yes, he will. In high places. <laughs> Care what they do to you on them jobs. God, if you working with God, God will elevate you any way he wants you to be elevated. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Jesus. My God. He'll move you expeditiously. Amen. Skip over Carol and, and Betty who've been there about 10 years and you yes. just got here last week. Yes. That's what favor will do. Yes. And that's what favor did for her. Yes. She didn't come asking for nothing else but her house and her property. Yes. She didn't ask for all of that. Hear what I'm saying. She never asked him to bless her beyond that. He said, I just want my stuff. That's all she said is, I just want my stuff. King said, no, I'm going to give you more than yours. I'm giving you all your stuff. Yep. Yep. Because you labored before you left. Yep. You was obedient. Your, your fields were full before you left. Yep. Yep. That was your money. Jesus. Wow. See, God will do exceedingly. Yes. Abundantly. Yes. Above all that we can yes. ask or think. Remember, his timing is everything. Some of us are moving too fast. Some of us are moving too slow. You got to move just right. You have to operate in a spirit of obedience in this season. Not hesitant or fearful of what God is saying. I'm pretty sure it didn't make sense for her just to jump up and leave. Not for a week, not for a month, for years to leave everything behind. How many of you willing just to walk away? If he said walk away today and leave it all. And you walk in this blind faith, trusting God. She didn't know where she was going. <laughs> he just told her to leave and so journey somewhere. So she decided, well, I guess I'll go to the Philistines. They right there about 50 miles down. <laughs> this wasn't a planned move. Check this out. It wasn't nothing that was planned in her life. And sometimes God will interrupt 
your plans and interrupt you with all you got planned, all of these things that you done figured out you was going to do. And God say, move. God say, move. Because you don't see this, but move. He said, a famine is coming. Danger is coming. Move. And we'll buy time. Well, well, Lord, I got an appointment next month. <laughs> I got this going on. I got that going on. Mm -hmm. Move. Mm -hmm. There's something called delay. Mm -hmm. Obedience. We'll figure it out after a while after we done got whooped because we've been in the hot box and we'll start moving. Mm -hmm. But you're moving now out of the timing of God. Mm -hmm. Move. Timing is everything, people yeah. of God. Whatever God say to do, he told, Mary told the people, just do it. We have to be obedient in the season. And we have to listen to the voice of God just like she did. She had such a relationship. She didn't question Elijah. She didn't question him. Where is your relationship with are you in the place that when God speaks, you will simply obey? Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. We thank you, oh God, that you loved us enough that you sent it, that we would be in a place of obedience because your timing is everything. I pray even now for those who have heard this word, that they will be obedient to your voice and do that which you have called them to do, O oh God, not in fear, not in doubt, but in trusting you. Relying on your every move, O oh God, because you are God that loves us, O oh God. You will never send us in a place of danger. But God, you loved her enough that you moved her out of the way. So God, help us to see that in our own selves. When you're shifting us and when you're telling us to move, it's because you see what we don't see. So, Father, we just repent. We come repenting for the delayed, dis uh, the delayed obedience and our disobedience to your voice. We repent for trying to go with our plans and not following your plans. We repent for ignoring your voice. We repent, oh God, that we got ourselves into this mess. Now, Father, you told us to come boldly to your throne of mercy. You told us to come so that we can obtain that mercy and that grace in a time of trouble. We need mercy and grace today and we ask that you forgive us of our sin of disobedience. Forgive us, oh God, for not moving in time and not listening to your instructions, trying to figure it out ourselves and putting ourselves in the hot box. We repent and we ask that you forgive us and cover us in your blood. We thank you even now, God, because you have a heart of compassion and you love your children. You said you love us so much that you correct us. So thank you for your correction today. Thank you, God. Thank you for your correction today. Now help us, oh God, just to be obedient in our forward movement. And we thank you for what you're about to do and what you've already done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, I'd like for you to pray this prayer. And if you would like to receive him as Lord and Savior, the word just simply tells us if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus was risen and he was, um, Jesus would died, I'm sorry, and, and he arose. He said, you're saved. Yes. As long as we believe in that death, that, bur that burial and that resurrection, he said, you're saved. So let's pray the sinner's prayer. Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And I come to you asking you to cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness. I believe that your son Jesus came to save me. He was crucified. He was buried. And he arose from the dead. I make that confession today with my mouth. And I receive him into my heart as Lord and Savior. And I thank you for receiving me as a son in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just that simple. 
it's just that simple. But we want to thank you, those of you on social media, Facebook, YouTube. And if you'd like to give, I'm just going to tell you to go to our website and to give on our giving agents. We do PayPal, credit cards, Cash App. Those things um, should be on the screen. And you can go there to our giving agents. We thank you for joining us today. We thank you for blessing us by, with your presence. We ask that you like and share this message with your family and friends. Until next time, we say God bless you and may heaven smile upon you is our prayers.